Hi, this is Manos Burlakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute. It is a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kamitz Masayaki from University Heart Center in Bad Crossingen. Dr. Masayaki is an expert in retrograde CTOPCI in every CTOPCI, and he has actually pioneered the ipsilateral collateral retrograde CTOPCI. And he's going to present case 66 of the second edition of the Milo CTO interventions. Kamitz, thanks again for presenting this case. Thank you so much, Manos. Uh, it's a great, uh, really a great honor to work with you on this uh, book also and uh, to give some inputs. And um, this case is a retrograde um, case finally, uh, and I will show you how it came. So <laughs> how, how, how things happened in this case. I presented also in TCT 2016. It was a four, 59 year old man, smoker, hyperlipidemia, hypertriglyceridemia, atrial hypertension, normal risk factors. So CC2, new or free. The ejector fraction was 39, he had anterior hypokinesia and he had a drug eluting stand in the obtuse marginal branch the same year. So here you can see the first image. I had an AL1 on the right coronary artery and a, and a um, yeah, EBUS XP 3.5 on the left and uh, the, the target vessel was the LAD, yeah, which we could see so nicely here. So. I was not happy with I was um, one radial and one femoral approach, and I was not so happy when you see how the AL wall in engaged. And um, what we should do in this case is we should put a wire in. And what I did is I had the staining on the proximal part, and I said, okay, I would change to a GR, GR catheter, normal R GR. And then I did the next uh, angio, and I saw this. Yeah, that was a huge spiral dissection, and so you know that the problem is that we, we had also septal collaterals to the LED, so the patient was not doing good. So the first thing I did, I, I just knuckled down the steam black and hopeful, hoped that I'm in. Then I confirmed with Ivis, and it, and I was lucky to be in true lumen, and I, I had to stand the whole vessel. And uh, and the interesting thing was in Ivis that even the the the, the the, where the where the septals were, were uh, the septal uptake were compressed in the hematoma, so I couldn't wire them at, at at this time. So I said, okay, I stop with my retrograde approach now from the right coronary artery. Uh, so uh, or, or the, the idea, and I try what can I achieve and the grade. But as you can see here, the LED is really this is a I think a complex CTO. We have blunt stump. We have. Uh, uh, 30 millimeter calcified lesion and the landing zone is really not nice. <laughs> so um, it's a GCTO score free, I think that's, that's reasonable. So regarding the hybrid algorithm, uh, we have ambiguous cap, we have a poor distal target and uh, we have probably inappropriate or uh, collaterals. So um, I don't know if it's uh, possible to get this uh, landing zone with a stingray, so um, probably to go integrate, retrograde. So um, the interesting thing is also this algorithm from the Asia Pacific Club. So um, can this algorithm help me? So the proximal cap ambiguity, uh, um, we, yeah. So we have no really ambiguity. We can we could do also EVIS, EVIS guided entry because there is a nice septal and uh, with a poor distal vessel quality and the bifurcation of the distal vessel. So the question is, have we got interventional collateral percent? If yes, we can go retrograde, but if no, we should go integrate wire-based strategy. So the question is, have we got retrograde collaterals? So um, here you can see I, I, I just punctured without IVUS in the first setting, uh, without IVUS, um, and uh, tried to achieve uh, progress. And um, sorry, oh, this is running now. And uh, what you can see here, the confidence at 12 gram was not so bad. And um, so I could penetrate proximal cap. I had a fine cross, seven French approach. And here you can see I, I, I did a wire redirection and I was nearly close to the distal landing zone. And here I tried to redirect the wire because here you can see I am a little bit far away from the distal landing zone. So wire redirection uh, was not bad but, but not, not, not perfect. So what to do now? So when I continue here I will have a lot of hematoma compressing my small vessel. So, um, <clears throat> What I did is actually, um, as 
I check my personal algorithm and sure. <laughs> I have this suboptimal wire position. I have a retrograde landing zone, which is very small and I have a high GTO score. And for me, it's a retrograde case then. So what I did here is uh, I, I, I checked retrograde options. So we have two retrograde options in this case. One is from the diagonal to distal LED, as you can see, but it's a little bit tortuous. And then there are also some uh, <clears throat> retrograde options from the diagonal to the distal landing zone. And uh, these were uh, rather useful. So there are the ipsilateral connections uh, uh, which we have, and uh, this uh, connection was a type B connection from the diagonal to the uh, to the LED. So um, regarding the frequency of these ipsilateral collateral connections, uh, we analyzed this in 290 uh, in 440 uh, CTOs, and uh, about 50 percent had ipsilateral collateral. So we're uh, going now for submitting data with a little bit bigger collective on, on these collaterals. But what we figured out is the main message is that in these collaterals we have almost to deal with epicardial courses. So um, what, I, what I show you next is a super selective injection in this diagonal and what you can see here is very nice connections to the distal landing zone. So the question is, can these connections help me for my procedure? It was not complicated to pass here with a C on wire, it's not running, but, um, and I could bring the C on wire down to the, to the LED. So I had something like a marker wire situation, and now I tried to penetrate again towards the, uh, towards the retrograde wire, but I failed. So in this case, regarding my retrograde strategy, I try first always to do a kissing wire. So it's, yeah, we do, you don't need space, you just work some minutes and try to make some kissing wire. If this fails, I take the anti-grade wire, uh, uh, the retrograde as a marker wire and puncture towards with the anti-grade wire. If this fails, I try to do some inside balloon wiring. I put a balloon uh, uh, there and anti-grade balloon and try to puncture distal and not beside the balloon, distal to puncture towards the balloon. If this fails, um, then I go for, try to do some contemporary Ross card. So I go nearly beside the balloon, take a small balloon, take a Gaia wire, and I, sh I look into uh, 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 coaxial plants uh, uh, if, if the Gaia wire directs directly to the balloon. If this maneuver fail, I go for, I was controlled reverse card or conventional reverse card. So that's what I try to do to uh, minimize the, 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 the space during the reverse card. So the anti-grade Gaia failed to penetrate the, the, the landing zone and to penetrate towards the retrograde uh, positioned wire. So um, I have to check if it's working. I'm sorry for that. So um, the next thing what I, what I tried is I tried to visualize the landing zone again and now I put up a retrograde wire. So a retrograde wire was was um, brought over the retrograde side and I did a retrograde reverse cart and then a tip in. And what I could achieve there is, uh, here you can see a rendezvous technique. So I had the retrograde micro catheter now over the ipsilateral collateral in the anti-grade guide and I just entered it with uh, some uh, normal workhouse wire. And in this situation, I was in the true lumen of this side branch. So from here, it was very easy uh, now uh, to take a dual lumen microcatheter. First, I dilated it, then I took a dual lumen microcatheter. And after the dual lumen microcatheter passed, I just passed directly with a seal black down towards mm -hmm. the, uh, the vessel. So I'm sorry that the videos are, are not working now, but I was in the distal true lumen, as you can see here. And then I did an IVAS confirmation if everything is okay because we are dealing with a LED and we could, uh, yeah, we achieved a very nice result. But the video is not running on us. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you, Camus. That's, um, that's a great, that was another great case. I think the lesson here is um, in terms of the, um, uh, of the RCA not injecting and, and having um, a little stain, as you say, having a, a, a protection safety wire can go a long way. So there was a question in currently, do we put a routine safety, safety wire in the retrograde donor guide? And I like your approach, as you said, that maybe putting a, a safety wire, maybe it's a good thing, protects you in case of a dissection or something else happens. 
So that's a, that's a great, uh, great lesson. And also regarding this one, um, I think the other lesson here is if you don't have the septals, the epicardials are still there, you can go retrograde and get it recanalized that way. So one thing is that uh, people are sometimes afraid about when you have this, uh, when you have uh, um, epicardial or, or septal which enters directly at the CTO distal cap. I mean, this is not the, the best situation. Sure. But it's also not the worst situation. But when you can, uh, when you when you can puncture retrograde and you can externalize your wire, then with the dual lumen microfluidity nowadays, it's very easy to to sure. to to solve this problem. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much again for the excellent case.